Welcome. In this video, I'm going to be taking a look at this Techno Wi-Fi 6 AX1800 dual band router. So this was provided to me by the distributor, but they're not compensating me for this video and they're not reviewing it before I post it. If you find this video helpful and you want to purchase one of these, I'll put a link to it in the description on Amazon. And if you use that link, it helps me out a little bit and doesn't cost anything extra. So this is model TR660. I'll get the shrink wrap off of here. So this says support mesh network, OFDMA plus MUMIMO, advanced WPA3 security. So here are the product highlights. It says pretty much what it said on the front, except where it says BSS coloring reduces interference and improves efficiency. A quick setup. Here are the product specs. So I'll go over a couple of these. It has an 880 megahertz dual core processor, which has Wi-Fi 6. It has one gigabit ethernet WAN port and four LAN ports, four antenna at 5 dBi, external omnidirectional antennas. So this supports 2.4 and 5 gigahertz concurrent. It supports WPA, WPA, WPA2 and WPA3. You can have a guest network on each of the bands. Has a WPS button and a reset button. The power adapter is 12 volts at 1.5 amps. And this shows how to connect it up. It comes with the router, cable, power adapter, installation guide. Let's open this up. So here's a user manual. So this says LED explanation. So this talks about what the LEDs mean. This talks about how to connect it up. This talks about configuring it with a web management page. So it'll have an SSID you connect to, and then you go to 192.168.188.1. And it looks like it goes through a setup wizard. This talks about how to mesh multiple together. Here's some troubleshooting. So here's the power adapter, and here's the access point. So I can pull the antenna up like so. So this is kind of a glossy plastic on top. It has this decorative reflective strip. On the back, we have the WAN port and the LAN port. It's easy to see because the WAN port is blue. The LAN ports are yellow. We have the reset button is recessed, so you don't accidentally hit it too easily. The WPS button is larger, so you can easily press that. The power socket there. Then there are lots of vents on here. So there's vents around the sides, the back, the side, no vents on the front, and there's vents on the bottom. So one thing I don't see on this are little keyholes to hang this. So if a requirement is that you can hang the router, then this may not be a good option. Although you could potentially figure out how to rig this up. You can use strapping and things like that. That's not uncommon. The antennas look like they could be oriented if you were to mount it in that orientation. So I'm going to do some testing on this and I'll come back on my computer and I'll walk through some simple setup of it and then we'll do some benchmarking. Okay, so I've connected the WAN port to my DSL modem and I've plugged in the router. So I'll wait for it to boot. Then I'll go to my Wi-Fi menu and I'm on a Mac, but you can do a similar thing on PC and I'll go to my other networks and I'll find the Techno network. I'll choose it. Then I'll go to my web browser and I'll type in 192.168.188.1. I'll hit enter. This will bring up the router connection wizard. I'll hit start going to try to detect my internet access mode. Okay, it detected that I use PPOE, which is correct. So I'll enter in my ISP username and password. So that would be supplied by your ISP. So I'm going to enter that in. I'll skip to the next page. Now it wants us to set up our Wi-Fi network. So I'll just name my network Techno. I'll add a password in here. So here it says set Wi-Fi password as router admin password. So that is not best practice. You would typically want to set a different one. I'm going to leave it that way for now, but typically you'd want to tap on that and then enter in a management password. This way, if you were to share your Wi-Fi password with someone, you're not giving them admin password to your router. Then it says, do you want to turn on emergency upgrade? So I'll agree to that. So this will upgrade the firmware on the router, which you do typically want to use the latest firmware on whatever router you're using. I'll hit save. It says completed. It says, do I want to save the password? I'll say save. So now it wants me to enter my password in. I'll hit okay. We're logging into the router. So we have an issue here where it's going to try and log in, but I think it disconnected from the network. So I'll rechoose the Techno Wi-Fi access point that I created. Okay, so it's asking for the password for that. I'll hit join. Okay, I've connected to the Wi-Fi access point and I'll actually just refresh this page here. There we go. So if you have trouble getting in, make sure you reconnect to whatever access point you created. So here we have the admin interface. If we click on internet, that is the internet setup we already did. If we click on router, we have our LAN here. So that's the IP address of the router. And this says if we have DHCP on or off, and then we have the start and end of our address pool. So this is pretty standard stuff. It also has IPv6 if you want to use IPv6. And we have mesh. I don't have a second router, but you could mesh these together if you have two of them. If we click on networking device down below, it tells which devices are on here. So it looks like we can set a speed limit or we can blacklist it. I don't want to blacklist it, that could knock me out. I assume you have to confirm that. And then there's a device blacklist over here. So if you want to knock someone off your network, you can add them to the blacklist. If you have someone that's using up too much bandwidth, you can limit that speed. 
Next we have wireless network. So it's currently set up with a 2.4 gigahertz network and a 5 gigahertz network, and they have different names. One is the Techno and the other is Techno 5G. So if you hit this dual frequency in one, it will use the same SSID for both networks. So here it says 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi state is on. We have the SSID, we have the encryption. You can choose different types here. We have the Wi-Fi password, and then we have the same thing for 5 gigahertz, and then we have advanced settings. Let's see what those are. So we can hide the network name. We can change the network mode. We can change the channel broadband, we can choose the channel, and we can turn the target wake time on or off. Let's look at the advanced settings on the five gigahertz. So we can change the network mode, we can change the channel broadband. So it's currently set to 80 megahertz. So that should give you the fastest speed, but if you have interference, you could change that down and it would slow it, but it could give you more reliable service. So like with any Wi-Fi router, you may need to tweak these settings. We have the wireless channel, TWT, Wi-Fi 5 backup network. So we can turn that on and then we can save. Then we have the internet and the internet settings, which are the internet and router here. So if we go to the network tab at the top, we have transmission power there. Looks like we can adjust this to low, medium, or high. We have guest network. So this is a good way to share your Wi-Fi with other people without giving them your main password. We have mesh network, IPTV. It says bridge or VLAN. I don't have a lot of experience with the IPTV. We have WISP, WPS, and we have some advanced settings here. You can look through these. Then we have application, we have port mapping. So this is if you want to pass a port from the internet to your local computers or servers, you can set that up here. We also have DMZ. So you could assign this to a device on your network and it'll pass the internet to that computer. So you have to be careful about using those things. They can be kind of dangerous. And then we have remote access. So this is off by default and that's the correct way to do it. But if you want to turn this on, you can turn on HTTP, SSH, or ping and save it. And then you can access this from outside of your network. Then we have system, we have admin password, time setting, restore, schedule task, firmware upgrade, dial up log, and router information. So let's run a benchmark on here. I'm going to connect up a second computer directly plugged into the router with a speed test on it. So there's a computer running this test connected to the router using an ethernet cable. So this will be testing the Wi-Fi speed. I'll hit start. And we're currently getting 120 megabits per second. So this is dependent on many things. So if you were to get this router, you might get different results. You could get faster, you could get slower. Okay, so we got 118 megabits per second download and 88 megabits per second upload. That's on the 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi. And to clarify what I was talking about before, you can have congested airwaves that will slow down internet. I haven't really tried to tune this configuration, so you could try to find an open channel that could speed it up, so there are many different options there. But I just wanted to do a quick test on my network as it is. And I have lots of Wi-Fi access points around here, so there's quite a bit of congestion. So I'm going to switch this over to the 5 gig network. I'll run this test again. So I forgot to mention that I'm running this on a MacBook Pro from 2015. So this is an older MacBook Pro. We did have a little peak there in about 500 megabits per second. So it looks like it rounded out at 131, and this is on the 5 gigahertz network. So there we got 131 megabits per second download and 623 upload. I'll run that again and see if we get any different results. Okay, those are some better results there. We got 673 download and 618 up. So I might've had some interference while I was trying to download. So this is on a Wi-Fi 5 computer. Now I'll do the same test on my phone, which is an iPhone 13 mini, which supports Wi-Fi 6. Okay, so I put those tests next to each other on the screen. The one on the left is the 2.4, the one on the right is the 5. And you see we got about 150 megabits per second, give or take, up and down on the 2.4. And on the 5, we got around 700 megabits per second. So I'm about 10 feet from the router, but I do have some obstructions between me and the router. Now I'm going to go run a test on my Mac Mini with M1 processor, and that's on a different floor from this router. Okay, so on that computer, we got around 80 megabits per second download and upload on the 2.4 gigahertz network. And on the 5 gigahertz, we got around 300 download and 150 upload. So as you can see from those results, having the Wi-Fi router on a different floor can slow it down. Although those are very respectable and they would work for many things. And just to clarify, I'm testing the speed from the computer to the router, not the computer to the internet. 
So if you have 100 megabit internet service, having a 500 megabit per second upload and download on your Wi-Fi router is five times faster than your internet. Now if you have gigabit service, your Wi-Fi could potentially be slower than your internet. Now for streaming movies, the highest 4K movies would take about 24 megabits per second, just to give you a frame of reference. A regular HD movie might be about five megabits per second. So that's the Techno Wi-Fi 6 AX1800 dual band router. I'll say I was impressed with the features of this router. I really like the performance of it. I like the web interface. I thought it was very easy to use, but it was also very fast. So one thing this router doesn't have is it doesn't have USB ports and things in the back like some routers do where you can plug in hard drives and such. Now I've used those before and I had trouble with it, so I ended up having to stop using those features. And there tend to be better options, like some you can plug a printer into and a hard drive. Well, there's other options for sharing a hard drive and printer that work better than plugging into your router. So I actually like that it doesn't contain all that extra stuff. This is a router and it just excels at being a router. So it wouldn't be a bad idea to research some optimizations for your wireless network, not just for this router, but for any router. Things like finding an open network to use or configuring some of the settings. Now certainly you could just plug this in and try it, and if you're happy with the performance, just leave it as is. But if you want to really tweak the performance, you could do things like set custom channels and things like that. So that's all I'm going to cover in this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If you like this video, please click like. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate it if you could do that. And thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye.